Welcome back students taking math for business and finance and math applications working on the chapter 17 summary practice test and we only have three problems left let's see if we can't get through all three in this video okay uh, right here we go we're on number three we're picking up where we left off so it says Abby Matthew bought a new Jeep commander for 30,000 the Jeep commander has a life expectancy of five years with a residual value of 10,000. Prepare a depreciation schedule for a straight line for the straight line method. So expectancy of five years, one, two, three, four, and five. And again, this is all just a lot of math here, okay? Um, so we have to figure out what our depreciation amount is for each year. The cost here is 30000 so these all stay the same. And our depreciation expense, remember, for straight line, it's cost less the residual value over the years, the uh, useful uh, life expectancy in years. And that gives us our depreciation amount you know, per year, okay? So we have 30,000 as our cost, less a residual value of 10,000 over five years. So that's $20,000 over uh, five years or $4,000 per year. So my depreciation expense is gonna be 4,000 and it's going to be the same for each year But our accumulated depreciation is going to change. So in our first year, you know, remember it, we're starting out with zero. So uh, zero plus four gives me four thousand, right? So the accumulated depreciation, accumulated means adding on, all right? So when we're adding on, we're taking what we had from the previous year of four thousand and adding this year's depreciation of four thousand, which now gives us eight thousand. And for year three, we're taking year two of 8,000, adding the four, that gives us 12. 12 plus the four again gives us 16. And the 16 plus four gives us 20,000. So that's our accumulated depreciation um, for each and every year. Now, uh, I don't have a column here for book value, so let me just write that in real quick. So if I had a book value, right? So at the end of my first year, okay, my book value, I take my cost less my accumulated depreciation gives me my book value. So 30 less 4 is 26. Oops. Is 26,000 as book value. In year two, it's 30 less eight, which is 22. And then year three is 30 less 12, which is 18. 30 less 16 is 14. And 30 less 20 is 10. Okay. Now notice that the book value obviously is, because it's straight line, you know, we start out at 30 and we just subtract four, subtract four, subtract four, because that's what our depreciation expense is, okay? But the whole bottom line to this is that when we get down to the end of our useful life, whatever our book value is, is what our residual value was, we determined to be, okay? And remember that the residual value is whatever you decide to pick. It's not something that you know, I could have just as easily picked 8,000 or I could have picked 12,000. It's, you know, it's just what you think it's going to be worth at that, that point in time. And you do have to use something that's relatively, you know, reasonable. Um, because if you, you're going to choose something that's unreasonable, then you might as well you just use a, a different uh, method. Okay. All right. So move on to the next one. All right. So car.com bought a Toyota for 28000 The Toyota has a life expectancy of 10 years with a residual value of 3000 
Okay, so after three years, Toyota sold for 19,000. What was the difference between the book value and the amount received if they're using the straight line depreciation? Okay, so straight line is cost, less residual value over the life. Gives us my depreciation per year. So that's the first thing we have to calculate here because we know that it's being sold for 19,000. So I have 28,000, whoops, 28,000 less the 3,000 for residual value um, over 10 years. So that's 25,000 over 10, which is $2,500 per year. And we know that at the end of three, you know, it says after three years. So if it's 2,500 per year, Okay. Our accumulated depreciation over the course of three years would be, we're multiplying by three, so we're ending up with $7,500 in accumulated depreciation. Okay. $2,500 plus $2,500 for year two plus $2,500 for year three gives me the $7,500 accumulated depreciation but notice I didn't do all of that math I just knew it was three years so I multiplied by three to get the $7,500 okay so what is my book value well I'm at if my cost is 28,000 and my accumulated depreciation is 7,500 that gives me a book value of uh, $20,500 is my book value but it's being sold for 19, so I'm subtracting the 19, and the difference between the two is $1,500. Okay, so the book value is $1,500 greater than what it was sold for. Okay, so um, the person who was buying it got a better deal because it's worth more than what they paid. Okay. All right, lastly, um, a machine costs, as soon as I saw the word machine, immediately I kind of tilt towards units of production, okay? Remember, you know, you choose the method of depreciation that you want that makes the most amount of sense for your financials. With a machine, you know, you can, you can depreciate it you know, in any of the four ways that we've been working with. Um, it all depends upon what it is that, how it is that you want to see your financial statements. But generally, a machine that produces units, we're going to generally use units of production. But does not necessarily mean we have to use units of production just because it's a machine? No. Okay. We could depreciate the machine, you know, using straight line. For example, let's say you had a, uh, a printing press, right? Okay, the printing press, you could depreciate it straight line, even though you know that printing press might produce 10 million newspapers. Right? Right? I mean, even though you know uh, it can produce 10 million newspapers, yeah, you can use the units of production method. But you can also use straight line if you kind of like say, okay, I know that I'm going to use that uh, that printing press over the course of say four years I'm just making stuff up here I could have used straight line I could have also used declining balance right I choose declining balance right because I want accelerated depreciation okay and if I just wanted to you know since I don't care about the information going outside of the business and I have to use makers when it comes to tax time, Right. Well, then I might just say, well, I just want to use makers and not worry about it. So, <coughs> again, you know, I, I mean, this is just sort of like what popped into my head when I read, when I saw the word machine. Right. And I just thought I'd bring it up to uh, make you aware of it. OK. I mean, the problems are going to dictate to you what, um, you know, the, the problems on the test or in the book are going to dictate. But in the real world, it's a choice. Right. So the machine cost 70000 and it had an estimated residual value of 6000 on an expected life of 300000 in units. So 
remember for uh, units of production we're looking for a dollar per unit okay so that we can multiply uh, times the number of units used right it says here what would be the depreciation in year three if 60,000 units were produced so in year three 60,000 units were produced it doesn't matter how many were how many units were produced in year one or year two it doesn't matter you know year one could have had 30 year one could have had 40 year one could have had 70 year two could have had 65 year two could have had 33 whatever that doesn't matter um, the problem here is you know how what would be the depreciation in year three if 60,000 units were produced so remember we need a dollar uh, per unit so we take our cost less our residual value over the units the number of units total expected life in units and that gives us a dollar per unit which we multiply by the number of units produced so here we have 70,000 less the 6,000 in residual value over the 300,000 units remember these are dollars these are units that's why we have dollars per unit dollars on top it says that's 64,000 300,000 units on the bottom and that gives me uh, let's see here 64 divided by 300 and that gives me uh, two dollars and uh, 14 cents per unit so now that we know our per unit is 214 for year three we have 60,000 units so all right let me just do this here again that doesn't seem right 64,000 70 minus 6 equals divided by 300 all right yeah um here's a rounding issue for anybody doing this um if you did the math it can, comes out to 0 0.213333 okay so we're, we are rounding up to two dollars and 14 cents because we have greater than um, right there is now 2.1333 as a dollar and of course since we have greater than 13 cents we're actually rounding up to 14 cents okay and that's why we're using 214 per unit and not 213 per unit okay It's, uh, you know, as I, that just hit me in the back of the head here. Okay, well, why, you know, I did the math and, it, and I came out with 21, you know, 0.21333, but yet I used 214 and I thought, okay, uh, why am I using 214? Because we're talking about greater than a penny, anything above a penny. It's sort of like, you know, if, um, you know, the, you know, if you, how can I put this? Uh, if you did something, um, if if you, uh, what's the example I'm looking for? If you had a, if you use something for a period of time, and it was greater than an even period of time, or like how age or something like that. If you 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 uh, you, you ended up with an age of say 2.25, all right. Well in the number of years you might you would round it up to three because it was greater than the two years in and of itself okay um but that's just hopefully you understand that okay that when we had point zero point two one three three this here three is greater you know is is greater than that 13 cent there okay so um we're rounding up to 14 cents and that's what we're we're using for the dollar per unit so with that said we take our 60,000 and we multiply it by the two dollars and 14 cents okay 
and that ends up giving us a depreciation amount of $12,600, okay, for that third year, for year three, all right? So with that, we're finished, and hopefully I didn't get you too confused about the $2.14, and just like everything else, if you don't understand, you know, watch the videos again, or telephone and speak with an instructor, and I will see you all in the next chapter, the Theory 4, Chapter number 18, okay, which will be covering inventory and overhead. All right, so see you then.